kind of in like a little bit of a rush this morning so i'm gonna show you guys the quickest most effective and long lasting way i like to give myself a little blowout which is with a curling iron this is from t3 micro and this one is a one and a half inch barrel my hair never gets like caught it just like very smoothly like glides through my hair it's got like about five heat settings but it gets very very hot on the fifth one so i like to stick it around like three to four i also love how like simple the functionality is like when you plug it in you just kind of click it this way to raise the heat the heat protectant i like to use is this color wow dream coat this one is the extra strength version i'm gonna put on like a robe for this because that is just how hot this curling iron gets i have used like their original like regular one but i didn't see like the best results with those but this one definitely works this heat protectant is also heat activated it kind of like adds the moisture and then when you add heat it just like locks it all in while that kind of settles in i'm going to show you guys the motion with the curling iron What's kind of nice about the curling iron is you can take like bigger strands like this when i show you the other two ways i give myself a blowout it doesn't work as nicely when you take bigger strands the trick is you always want to make sure this clamp side is facing the mirror so if your mirror is in front of you so you guys are like my pretend little mirror and i'm always going to clamp with this facing you step one obviously you clamp your hair make sure the clamp is facing the mirror or facing away from you and then just pull the strand down and do your best to kind of like get these little end pieces inside of the clamp you're going to start to curl your hair upward you're not going to curl like against the clamp like that direction like you're gonna curl with it hold it up here for however long you need you really don't need that much time especially if you're using this curling iron because it gets super hot and it settles in very very quickly this part is kind of the tricky part i would say but you kind of unwind it a little bit and then wrap around wrap around use the clamp and release i obviously will show you guys again but clamp slide down try to get in those little end pieces wind or curl up hold it for however long you need you're basically pulling the top layer out and then like another top layer out and then releasing you're pretty much doing like this little kind of like dance around the strand trust me it kind of looks confusing when you're watching like somebody else do it but like when you do it yourself you're like oh this makes a lot of sense and it's like very very quick and easy same exact situation on this side you're gonna clamp your hair pull it down as much as you possibly can get these little end pieces in wind it up hold it there for however long you need and then you're gonna unwind stabilize yourself if you need to unwind around down, unwind around and then like kind of release i'm waiting for my curling iron to heat up i thought i would also mention a few other things to just keep in mind if you want that like super voluminous like bouncy looking blood go in with a barrel that's like either 1.5 inch and above personally i wish i had a two inch barrel but the 1.5 inch does give you a nice blood the curls are slightly a little bit tighter but it still can work and then my tip number two and this is like pretty relevant to the blowout style just in general is it's going to depend very heavily on the type of haircut you have if you don't have a lot of layers in your hair you're not going to get that very bouncy like look just because all of your hair is sitting at one length you want those layers because you want to like add volume like this way and you're not going to really get that when everything is like sitting very aligned enough talking and more doing we're going to begin clamp roll upwards and it's a very quick process because i'm not trying to cinch my hair and then unwind unravel unravel release like this literally took under 15 maybe even 10 seconds like that's how quick it goes and trust me like once you kind of like get the motion down it is a very very fast run i would definitely recommend you pull the curling iron away from you so that you get this like nice tension to form if you just like hold it a little bit too loosely it might not give you the best effects if you kind of get the feeling that your hair is going to slip out if you pull in your ends all the way from the beginning you can always go back to it towards the end so right now i'm like curling the top half and while i'm doing my unwinding motion i'm going to curl up a little bit after i unwind the first time and then try to pull these hairs inside of the clamp just kind of like give it a moment and then do your unwinding motion again i like to wind up my hair when i'm like done with that particular layer and just like clamp it to my clothes now we're going to start to work on the other side and it's pretty much the same thing except you probably will have to change which finger you're using to touch the clamp so on my right side i tend to use my thumb but it is the same exact motion and then you release a little bit just to give yourself some space 
and then unwind. I find this side a lot easier to maneuver. I don't know if it's because I can touch the clamp with my thumb and it feels like a lot less awkward. I feel like the part for me that ends up being the most time consuming with this process is like grabbing my sections of hair. Even at this stage, while I'm like waiting for it to curl the top, I even will try to pull in those little like end pieces. That probably might be the easier way to do it than the other way I mentioned. You kind of have to play around with this whole technique and see like what works best for you. Obviously right now it doesn't look very impressive, but once we get all the layers in, that's when it's gonna start to really come together. Second layer I do is like from my eyebrows. I actually apply my heat protectant within each layer just so I don't miss a section. This layer is kind of the most challenging for me just because there's so many like short pieces up here that are kind of hard to get inside the clamp. This one I definitely like to start from the back because the front pieces are so short and they need a little bit of extra care. Same exact motion we have been doing for these pieces. I tend to kind of like leave the ends and like tackle them a little bit later after I've curled the top pieces. You do kind of want to get these as close to the crown as possible because you want that like lift coming from the top and this is the last layer you'll be able to do that. The only thing I don't love about this T3 Micro is I'm supposed to be able to touch this top bit, you know, to like really be able to control the barrel with like both my hands, but this this gets so hot that I actually can't touch the top. Like I can definitely touch it with my fingers, but I can't grip onto it. I always get so excited at this part because I'm like, we're almost done. <laughs> I'm gonna take out these clips. This is what the curls are looking like. They are very, very tight right now. I like to loosen it up while it's like at this very, very tight stage with some hair oil. I do have like three different kinds of hair oils and I'll kind of walk you guys through when I use each of those. My favorite one is definitely this one from Kerastase. My hair cutter or hairstylist actually recommended this to me and I've been hooked since. Literally don't need a ton and I like to really warm it up in my hands. And I just slowly start to break up and like shake the hair. I also will pull my hair towards the front and then just really get in there with both hands on both sides and go in the direction of where we were curling. You can also do this like scrunching motion to just like really get the ends. But here's how the finished hair should look. It's obviously very tight right now and if that's not what you're comfortable with, it will settle down, especially if you didn't use any kind of setting spray like I did. It's also gonna depend really, really heavily on how well your hair holds a curl, obviously. So kind of use products to work around that. I am just trying to focus on the technique and what I like to do to really get this kind of flowy, bouncy, bloody hair. I think this is so pretty. You can kind of see what I mean when you're adding volume this way. I hope this helped and this is how I achieve it with a curling iron, but tomorrow and the day after, I'll show you two other ways. Today, I'm gonna show you guys a vlog technique that I learned from one of the hair salons I go to. And it's actually with a hair straightener and a round brush. I decided to like match my tops with whatever tool I'm using. So at this particular salon, they use a lot of Dyson products. So I went ahead and bought this Dyson Corral because it just works so incredibly well and it's just really easy. I feel like if you're at like skill level zero, this is such a great place to start because I feel like everybody has some kind of straightener laying around their house, however old it may be, there's no judgment here. And then just picking up a round brush is way less expensive than buying a full-on new tool. It's also way easier to add some variety depending on what round brush size you get. Honestly, these round brushes are gonna be like the main star of the show. So the point I'm just trying to make is don't feel like you need to like run out and go buy a new appliance all the time. Like sometimes this is all you need to switch up. I'm gonna walk you guys through the motion before I turn on my straightener because this is actually wireless. So I am not gonna be running on a lot of time. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your strand and in your straightener, you're going to obviously clamp. And I personally like to rotate it in this like little C to like pull the curl outwards. And then you're just gonna slowly pull through your strand. And then once you hit the tail end, you're gonna follow that with your round brush, kind of like tuck the ends of your hair into the round brush. And then you're just going to curl it up. And then the round brush is what's going to actually set the curl into place. So another way to kind of like think about this is this is just going to be your method of applying heat. And then this is going to be the curling action. And then very similar to what we learned yesterday, we're just gonna kind of like dance around the curl and like release it as we go down. I'm gonna turn on my hair straightener so we can see it in action. Starting at the base, we're gonna curve it outward and then pull. And you really wanna like take your time with this because you wanna make sure you're really applying that heat since you're not going to be able to apply heat once you roll it up. Obviously it's gonna depend on what barrel size you're using. This one is a 155 millimeter. And this one definitely gives me a bit looser, more relaxed of a curl just 
just because it's a lot wider. I also would say if you have hair that doesn't really hold curls very easily, this might not be the best option just because you're obviously not applying heat for a really, really long time. But I do feel like this is a really good method just to see if you like a blowout look. Obviously, you can use whatever hair straightener you have at home, but if you guys were curious about the Dyson Corral specifically, I did want to share kind of like my review and my thoughts on it and whether or not it's worth it. Personally, I do really love the fact that it is wireless. I feel like I hate fussing around with wires and like looking for a plug. So it's just really nice that I just leave it in its little charging port for however long and it's like ready to go. It doesn't take that long to heat up. Like it takes maybe like 15 seconds at most for literally the highest setting, which is 410 degrees Fahrenheit. Last like at most, 30 minutes. So if you're not very quick about doing your hair, I would definitely keep that in mind. And also depending on what hair type you have, like if it's very, very curly, that might take you a lot longer. So this might not be worth it. One of the main reasons why I bought this hair straightener specifically is because it is so good when you're traveling abroad. I'm sure we all have had or gone through the pain of bringing some kind of appliance abroad and it just like fries or like short circuits or it starts making like weird noises just because the voltage difference is crazy you don't run into those issues with this because you just like plug it in and like charge it like you would with your iPhone overnight so like the last time I was in Europe I brought this and it was just so convenient because in the mornings I could just take like 20 30 minutes to just like style my hair and it was just really quick and easy and I didn't have to worry about losing or frying my expensive appliances and I very much did this hairstyle like the entire trip I also feel like this is one of the more less damaging ways to do your hair because obviously you're not applying heat while you're holding it and setting the curl into place if that's something that does concern you i would highly recommend trying out this technique we've already made it to the top little pieces these are definitely going to be very very quick this volume is literally so crazy that's kind of the nice thing about the hair strainer is you can get really close and like be able to clamp at your roots whereas yesterday because it gets so hot and i don't want you guys to burn yourself and i also don't want to burn myself it's hard to get in these like finer areas but you definitely can do that with the hair strainer i do want to introduce you guys to a different hair oil today because i want to give you guys a few different options that i like to use so this one is from crown affair and this smells so so good like i honestly don't know what it is and it is so great especially if you have asian hair like me because this is a very very lightweight hair oil you can already see just how much more softer these ends are looking anyway i hope this was helpful because this is definitely the easiest and the most beginner friendly blowout style that i'm going to show you guys the next one is definitely not going to be for everyone and you guys will see why but a lot of people have been requesting me to do a little tutorial on the specific appliance this is how i do my straightener bloods this is probably my most used technique but let me know if you guys try it out for yourself because i definitely haven't seen too many people do it this particular way we've made it to our final little blood technique and this is what i meant by it's not going to be for everyone but i do know some of you guys have been asking me for a tutorial because you guys don't know how to use your air wrap this is definitely not like a quick and easy process but i do think that this gives you the best blood out of the three that i've shown you my hair is pretty dry because i washed it last night so i'm going to try to like dampen it up with some heat protectant like always i will walk you guys through before i turn on the appliance i feel like What's really nice about this color wild dream coat is you can really really coat and secure your hair and this product isn't gonna weigh it down let's go over settings so it's got three little fan settings i go for the highest amount i feel like us with asian hair we have a lot thicker strands they weigh a lot more so you are going to need that very high powered suction if it were up to me i would actually make the suction a lot stronger on this so you also get some heat settings i go with the highest amount of heat do what you think is best for your hair my priority is i want this blood to last me as long as possible and i don't want to take forever to do it and then you have your on button and if you push it all the way up it goes into the cool setting so holding this cool setting while you're air wrapping your hair is really what's going to set the curl into place also this is the longer attachment for the dyson air wrap the longer newer attachment is nice because you can kind of like switch and click and change the direction that it's suctioning i personally like to make sure that these arrows are on the back side so the locking side of the air wrap i say that because i always want to have these arrows facing the mirror for when when I air wrap my hair. I find the suction is best when these arrows are facing away from me. It's also really nice for your holding hand because now you can maneuver all these little buttons with your thumb. So I like to grip the strand between my thumb and my index finger just so when I start to apply the suction that it has a little bit of support. And I apply my air wrap from the back so that it kind of binds around this way because I want the curls to go like outwards and away from my face just to get that really bouncy voluminous look. Final thing is you're gonna want to make sure these ends get wrapped around the barrel before you start making your way 
upward and you're just gonna keep moving upward let go pinch to add more support drag upwards and repeat sometimes if you feel like it's getting like a little bit loose while you're dragging it upwards I will even like roll this barrel manually you want to maintain a very very taut tension because that is what's gonna make the curl hold into place and last all day once you have the strand all wrapped up and it is like at the base of your head hold it there for however long you need to dry your hair and then with these buttons you're going to push this lever upwards to hit the cool shot it's just immediately going to cool down your hair and just lock the curl into place plugged in my air up and I'm just gonna show you guys it in action Add more tension, you can drag this down straight, roll it up, drag it down more straight, roll it up, and that is going to add a little bit more pressure and tension to the strand to wrap around the barrel. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I always make sure to turn this off before I release my hair. And once you kind of have this set up and you're ready to do the other side, you just easily switch it and just kind of keep going back and forth. My hair is very, very dry right now, so it looks pretty easy in the way it's suctioning, but when it's wet, let me tell you, it is so, so hard to get it to suction sometimes that it's almost a little frustrating. I wouldn't go as far to to say that you can't treat this as like a blow dryer after you shower and wash your hair but if you are not mentally prepared to sit down and at least take 30 minutes to do your hair then it's probably not going to be worth it to you also i'm sorry i'm a little bit all over the place with this tutorial but you cannot really use this if your hair is completely wet so you do have to do like a rough dry before you go in with this air wrap i'm just berating the point that it isn't like a quick and easy fix in the morning like some people may make it seem i personally think i've only been been able to bring this down to as close to like 20 to 25 minutes in the morning after I shower so it is very time consuming so if you don't have a lot of time on your hands it might be something to consider when buying even though it's not necessarily like the quickest process I do think it turns out the best the most consistently you can't really like rush to the process you have to do kind of like a very steady slow job with it that that's why it's very consistent and how it looks and turns out I would maybe recommend this if you're like an evening shower and you maybe want to do this at night so you have fresh hair in the morning morning or if you can spare like a little bit of time in the morning after you wash your hair at night this is a little bit of a quicker process because your hair isn't quite as wet i do feel like this ends up lasting a lot longer because it really opens up those hair bonds when you apply the heat and then it immediately locks them in place because it closes them with the cool shot final little thing i will say about this is i do feel like i tend to not like miss strands or have those little stragglers just because this suctions them up without me even realizing okay this is pretty much the finished hair i'm just going to very quickly kind of loosen it out this one is the gizu honey hair oil because i feel like the air wrap already does a really good job at making the hair appear very soft just to add a little something to the ends like i literally maybe only do like two tiny tiny drops i don't recommend applying this hair oil all over it's just to add a little bit of nourishment to these drier ends I'm gonna quickly do a little finger comb it's where this one just always ends up looking the best i also feel like it looks the most clean i don't know why that's the case but i just feel like the curls and the waves just end up looking very cohesive it just nicely flows so effortless and once you kind of get the air wrap going and you get used to it it's pretty much like a mindless process from there on out this was my third and final tutorial on how i like to achieve my blowouts i hope this video was helpful this one is personally my favorite one but let me know what you guys think if you try it out for yourself i'd love to know down in the comments but thank you guys so 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 much for watching